Hi, it's Kim here from Apostrophe S, and today I'm going to be showing you our painted patchwork coaster sets. Here's what they look like all finished up. Oh, I can get them out. It's a set of four coasters, and you can see we've got square for one option, or the round ones. Um, and we also have different color stories. So if you want to pick something more seasonal and holiday oriented, you can, or you can match your personal style, um, your decor even. They're, you've just got a lot of options for these. And I love how they are geometric and interesting and fun, but they also remind me of the quilt blocks my grandma used to make. Um, she's a fantastic quilter, and whenever I see things, geometric designs like this, it reminds me of her. Um, anyway, in your kit, it'll look something like this. We've got all of your wood pieces shrink-wrapped so they're going to stay nice and tidy for you. Your felt pieces for the back, sandpaper, paint brushes, glue, and of course your paint and your top coat. Ooh, just about lost that. And from home, you'll want a paper plate to use as a paint palette. You'll just dump out each of those um, little paint pots on here and it's much easier to get in with a brush rather than trying to dig into those little pots. And also some scratch paper to protect your work surface. If you really want to, you could also get a pair of gloves to keep your hands clean. Um, you'll, pe you'll be painting little pieces so you'll definitely get paint on your fingers. I still have remnants of it from yesterday. Um, so that's all that you're going to need from home and let's get started and make some coasters. Um, when you pull them out of the shrink wrap, you'll want to be very careful so that pieces don't go flying. All of these triangles are going to look really, really similar, so you want them to stay with the correct coaster. Um, and then you can just go ahead and take these apart, paint them, and put them back together. If you're kind of a crafty perfectionist like me, you're going to want the grain to go in the same direction. It adds an extra step and an extra thing to be aware of, but I kind of like when the grain is all together. So I would take off my frame or my outline, whatever you want to call this, and then as I paint, um, I'll pick up, like let's say this is my white piece, I'll go ahead and paint that with the grain, and then when I put it down to dry, I'll just rebuild the pattern down here. So the pattern's staying the same, and the placement of each of those pieces is staying the same, so the grain is all the same. Um, that does add a little extra thing for you to be aware of. So if you'd like to do it and it's worth it to you, fine. And if it's going to drive you crazy, that's all right too. Um, so go ahead and get started painting these. Get all four of your coasters out and then paint by color. So start with your light color first and get all of the, the pieces painted in that light color and then rinse out your brush and let those pieces dry and go on to the next darkest color and on and on until you get to the darkest last. That way you're not rinsing out your brush a million times. Um, now pretend this is painted. Um, once you've had everything painted and it dries, you're going to glue your outlines to the base. Um, so, where's my glue? Here you'll just make sure you get it into all of these cute little angles here, all the way around, and then line it up, squish it down, and make sure that you're not overhanging either side. It is flush perfectly all the way around just like that. And now this looks an awful lot like uh, board puzzles that you might have done in preschool. Um, so it's going to be a nice, cute, perfect little outline for your pieces to go in. Now, I've got one right here. This is mine that I've done so far. So I glued my outline and now I've got my pieces ready to stick in there. I've already glued these ones down and you can see I kind of left these ones in about the same placement, so my wood grain's going the same way. Again, you don't have to do that. I just kind of want to. All right, so here we go. We just put some glue in the base of that, and I'm going to squish my pieces in, just like this. I love these designs that we have for you. I think it's kind of a neat blend when you've got um, some modern color schemes with kind of a traditional geometric, something that you would have seen on your grandma's quilt top, right? 
it's kind of neat to have those blended together and to see that pattern in a different, um, a different medium. I like it. Um, so you can see I've still got some wiggle room with my glue and that way I can make sure that I don't have any extreme gaps. I can kind of space them out just a little bit like this. Now once those are in and glued, you're going to apply paint just on the outline here if you want that edge to have paint on it. I like it with paint. So go ahead and do this. Go about an inch at a time so you don't spill too much onto the top like that all the way around. And that's what I've got here. We went all the way around with this one. Now it's time for the top coat. So grab your sandpaper, a brush, and your top coat. And you'll want to stir this up so that it's nice and thoroughly mixed. Now when we sand, we're not gonna go crazy with this unless you want a super distressed look. All the sanding you need to do is just light, like this. What we're doing is evening out um, the paint. So some layers might, some pieces might have more paint than others and we're just evening that out. Then dip in your brush and we're gonna smush this right into all those little cracks. So you kind of dab it. It looks milky when it goes on and that's a good thing. We can see where we've already covered and it will dry clear. So just do what I'm doing here. Um, pay special attention to those gaps and squeeze some, some of that um, top coat right in. Like this. Okay. And then you'll smooth it out. All right. Then you let this dry and we're gonna repeat the same process one more time. So once it's dry, sand it lightly like before and apply the top coat, paying special attention to those gaps and squishing it in there. And the last step, let me carefully scoot this away. Our last step is to stick on our felt squares. So you're gonna use the glue and the felt squares that you have in the kit or circles and make sure you get it onto all of the angles and the edges and the corners because you don't want those to be flipping up. And then it's pretty self-explanatory. You just stick it onto the back and then you have your super cute and darling and interesting and unique coasters. So you can entertain, you can display them. I feel like they're artwork just to display. Um, you can gift these too. I think anybody would love to receive these. And who knew that making it could be so much fun? It's painted patchwork from apostrophe S. Make it yours.